Hello gamers, this is David and welcome to the Aorus launch event. As you can see from the video, Aorus, the premium gaming brand of Gigabyte, has been proudly innovating GPU cooling technology for over 15 years. With every new product release, it is our goal and commitment to provide exceptional performance and stability to your gaming experience. Today is no different. As you're about to see, our latest max cover cooling technology on our newly launched graphics card will be the ultimate cooling solution for your next gen gaming PC. So, sit tight and enjoy the exciting new features we are about to show you today. Team up and fight on. So guys, today we're very excited to announce the brand new Aorus RTX 3080. These are the most powerful and the best cooled graphics cards that we've ever made. This new generation of gaming cards feature the max covered cooling technology. And to better introduce this technology to you guys, I would like to pass this to our special guest. Everyone, let's welcome Linus Tech Tips. What's up everyone, Linus here from Linus Tech Tips, and if you're old like me, then you've seen a lot of architectural keynotes. I mean, can you believe the GTX 10 series came out four years ago? 16 nanometer process, GDDR 5X memory. Jensen said the GTX 1080 would be faster than two 980s in SLI. How exciting was that? But then before we knew it, Turing was announced. Dedicated RT and tensor cores, programmable shading, Real-time ray tracing was finally a reality. But they grow up so fast. Now, we're in the age of Ampere. 28 billion transistors, an eight nanometer process, and 1.9 times the performance per watt of its predecessor. 1.9 times the performance per watt. And yet, that didn't stop them from adding more watts. I mean, here, just look at this one. It's a chunk. The GTX 1080 was 180 watts. The reference 3080, 320 watts. Which is why I'm here today to tell you how Aorus completely reimagined the cooling on their Aorus RTX 3080 compared to previous generations with a solution they're calling Max Covered Cooling. I actually love it because it describes exactly what you're looking at. There's three fans covering the front of this cart. So change number one, the stack fan. On a traditional triple fan GPU, you've actually got little dead zones between the fans here with very little movement between them. So as you can imagine, the fins under there are not doing a ton of work leading to diminished thermal efficiency. Well, the stack fan deletes dead zones by simply having the three fans overlap with the two side fans brought up to the front and the middle fan holding down the rear. So they actually like spin over top of each other. Lower GPU temps from fans that are larger, slower, and quieter. Sweet. Number two, the Aorus RTX 3080 achieves better heat dissipation than traditional multi-fan designs by eliminating air turbulence caused by the direction the fans spin. Side-by-side -side fans that spin the same direction can actually create oppositional airstreams that collide, weakening thermal efficiency. So Aorus's implementation seeks to use an alternately spinning middle fan that promotes smooth airflow with its neighbors and increases air pressure. It's like, I can kind of relate to that middle fan, you know? Spin in the opposite way. Middle fan, I get you. And number three, the feature with the coolest name, Wind Claw. Wind claw refers to a set of stationary blades that serve to channel the air from the active fans so that the heatsink is more uniformly and more completely cooled. Really neat stuff. 
But we all know there's more to cooling than just fans, which is why the Eurus RTX 3080 has a copper mounting plate with direct contact to both the GPU and VRAM for efficient heat transfer from the interior cores out to the heatsink via a vapor chamber. Now, if you haven't seen my video from six years ago, don't blame you, it was six years ago, the reason vapor chambers are awesome is that they have better heat transfer than solid blocks of metal, but greater surface area and dissipation than heat pipes. So then after the vapor chamber, the fins on the ERS 3080 heatsink have an angular design that helps get more air in and out of them. And they've got this extra extended heatsink that's exposed on both sides, letting the air actually pass right through. Very cool. And if that weren't enough, there's even an LCD edge view display on here for monitoring your GPU usage, temps, game FPS, heck, you can even put little custom text or GIFs on there. There's even a Tamagotchi style egg that hatches and levels up the more hours you put on your GPU. That's very, very extra. So thank you to Aorus for sponsoring this video. Check out their RTX 3080 with max covered fans or their gaming OC and Eagle OC cards with more conventional triple fan designs at the link down below. Which, wait, wait a minute. I'm not even on the right YouTube channel right now. Why am I doing this? So you heard it from Linus. These brand new generation of Aorus graphics cards feature a ton of improvements over our previous generation designs. However, I'm sure you're dying to find out how these new graphics cards will perform in real world situations. So our team has prepared a ton of benchmarks as well as data to present to you. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at how these new graphics cards perform. I'm sure this next part is the part that many of you have been waiting for. We're about to take a first look at the real-world performance of the brand new Aorus RTX 3080. However, before we begin, I just want to quickly tell you that these are preliminary performance numbers, including the GPU temperatures and fan speeds. Our teams are still fine-tuning the drivers, as well as the fan curves and speeds for these new cards, so you can expect to see performance and temperature improvements down the road. Make sure to follow us on our social media to get the latest information on those. Now, let's begin. Our first benchmark today is with GTA 5. This game launched back in 2015 and is an extremely popular open world action game. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this game title. Right now, you're seeing GTA 5 with a GTX 1080 Ti at 4K Ultra settings. Our average FPS is 37, which is not ideal for smooth gameplay. Jumping up to an RTX 2080 Ti, you can see a small bump in performance. Things are a little smoother with an average FPS of 42 under the same 4K Ultra settings. When jumping up to the brand new Aorus RTX 3080, you'll see a dramatic improvement in 4K gaming performance. This represents about a 26% improvement over the RTX 2080 Ti and a 43% increase over the previous GTX 1080 Ti. If you're looking to achieve the smoothest 4K gaming performance in GTA 5, the clear option is to go with the new Aorus RTX 3080. When running this benchmark, we saw temperatures ranging from 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. We'll put numbers on the screen for you to see right now. Let's jump to another popular open world game, Red Dead Redemption 2. This is a more recent title which launched at the end of 2019. Let's start off with the GTX 1080 Ti at 4K max settings. Average FPS is around 34 which is enough to provide smooth gameplay. Jumping up to the RTX 2080 Ti, we see a substantial performance improvement but not quite 4K 60 just yet. Now let's move over and talk about the brand new Aorus RTX 3080. As you can see, we're seeing another significant improvement in our in-game FPS. So if you want to get the best possible 4K gaming experience in Red Dead Redemption 2, look no further than the Aorus RTX 3080. During this benchmark, we also saw a similar temperature range, peaking at 60 to 65 degrees Celsius.
For the next benchmark, let's jump into Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The footage that you're seeing here is with the Aorus RTX 3080. We're running this at 4K with maximum settings, and right now, you can see we're reaching over 100 FPS. This is a very impressive result that wasn't possible with previous generation graphics cards. These new cards deliver great gaming performance and deliver ultra smooth gameplay experiences. We've also ran performance tests on many other game titles. We'll put the data on screen for you to see now. At 4K resolution, it's no surprise that the Aorus RTX 3080 is the king of performance. If you're looking for high resolution gameplay, this is the card that you want in your system. At 1440p resolution, the Aorus RTX 3080 delivers great performance and will allow you to take full advantage of high refresh rate gaming monitors for that ultra smooth gaming experience. Lastly, let's take a look at the 1080p gaming performance. And no surprises here, our latest card handles 1080p gaming without breaking a sweat. As you can see, the Aorus RTX 3080 is a performance monster. This is one of the most powerful graphics cards that we've ever created. And don't forget that this is just the beginning, and we'll continue to keep fine-tuning the performance, temperatures, and noise levels. You can expect to see improvements as we have more time to tweak and optimize the card. Remember to follow us on social media for the latest updates on how far we can take the Aorus RTX 3080. Now that you've seen the performance of the new Aorus RTX 3080 graphics cards, let's quickly talk about what else is new from Gigabyte. If you plan to upgrade to the new graphics cards, you want to make sure that you have a high quality power supply that can meet the power requirements for this new generation. There's two new power supplies that we recommend. The Gigabyte P750GM and the P850GM. These are great options because these are both 80 plus gold certified, feature a full modular design, high quality Japanese capacitors, and a 120 mm smart fan. These are guaranteed to be compatible with the latest generation of Gigabyte and Aorus graphics cards. A new addition to the Gigabyte family is our new M series of gaming monitors. These are high performance monitors with cutting edge features such as super speed IPS and KVM. Let's take a quick look at the world's first KVM gaming monitor. So as you guys can see, max covered cooling technology is very impressive and it helps to bring a lot of new benefits onto the table. If you guys want to have the best cooling performance on a graphics cards, you're definitely going to want to take a look at the brand new Aorus RTX 30 series. Today we announced a ton of new products which includes the Aorus graphics cards, Gigabyte graphics cards, monitors, as well as power supplies. And if you want to find out more information about any of the products that we announced today, don't worry because our team is going to be transitioning to a live Q&A session after this quick commercial break. So guys, stay tuned and we'll be right back.
Hello everyone. Today we're going to explain the key technology behind Max Covered Cooling, the focus of our latest Oris RTX 30 series graphics cards. The RTX 30 cards are energy hungry beasts. Both the RTX 3080 and 3090 consume over 300 watts at their peak, which means more heat will be generated when handling your favorite AAA game titles or heavy load tasks such as 3D rendering. That's the reason why we focus on improving cooling for the Oris RTX 30 series. After all, only with superior thermal management can you get the best performance out of your GPU. So let's jump in into the Max Covered fan design. There are three major technological components. Number one, stacked fans. Number two, the wind claw. And number three, alternated spinning. The stacked fan is the most important feature under the Max Covered cooling system. On traditional graphics cards, there is a three fan design. There's a space left between each fan called the dead zone. This part of the card receives little to no airflow, resulting in heat accumulation and affecting performance over time. The Oris design team came up with a unique solution. To make it better, we made it bigger, creating the largest fans on the GPU ever. By enlarging the fan size and by stacking the outer fans over the middle one, we eliminated these dead zones, guaranteeing 100% airflow coverage over the entire heatsink. Next is the wind claw. It's a stationary fan blade under the left and right fans, which channels more air around the fan to the heatsink, increasing both the airflow pressure and thermal efficiency. Lastly, alternated spinning is the tech that we've been using since the GTX 10 series. However, when three fans rotate in the same direction, there will be turbulence between each fan, which negatively causes heat dissipation. We've solved this by alternating the direction of the middle fan thereby reducing turbulence and promising better heat dissipation. We hope you enjoyed our explainer video behind Max Covered Cooling on our Oris RTX 30 series graphics cards. If you want to learn more about how our cooling will fetch benchmarks and performance, stay tuned for our Oris RTX 30 series launch event on September 17th. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, this is Howard and Brian from the Oris marketing team and welcome to the Oris RTX 30 Max Cover Cooling mm -hmm. launch event. Wow, that is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad to have you here with us today for the live Q&A portion of the event. Uh, we know that NVIDIA 30 series has been all the hype for the past month or so or even longer perhaps, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so we're here to answer your guys' question on Oris and Gigabyte graphics cards. Uh, we have got a lot of questions submitted already, so we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk quickly about you know, Gigabyte's history in, in graphics cards. Um, we have always been an industry leader in graphics cards, and we continue that trend today. So yeah. starting with the GTX 400 series, mm -hmm. for example, we introduced an awesome cooling design called WinForce 3X cooling design. And with our GTX 1080, we have introduced the industry first stacked fan cooling mm -hmm. design. And with our latest generation RTX 2080 Ti, we combine not only the aesthetics, but we combine it into the cooling design to have something that offers the best of both worlds in terms of looks and performance. And today we're very proud to finally be able to introduce our newest cutting edge cooling technology called Max Cover Cooling which is going to be a combination of different cooling technologies combined together. And this type of cooling technology is going to be found exclusively on Oris 30 series graphics cards. We'll talk more about that in a short bit. Uh, let's talk quickly about the launch stuff because you know, it is launch day today. Mm -hmm. um, we do have two Gigabyte cards available uh, on the shelf today. We have the Gigabyte RTX Gaming OC and we have the Gigabyte RTX 
Eagle OC cards that are just uh, right in front of us right here. Mm -hmm. And so the Gaming OC is a household name, and this one is definitely uh, something that you guys are probably very familiar with, as it's been available um, in the previous generations as well. And this is a very uh, household name for us, and we think it's going to be a great mainstream card for most people. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ego OC is something that's going to be new. And we first introduced the Ego OC series this year on the 1650s, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I believe. And we feel like the Ego OC is going to be a great card for uh, value to performance. So very excited to have these available um, today. Uh, available, since this is a global launch event, availability will kind of depend yeah, yeah. on the region. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but here in the US, they are going to be available at you know, Newegg, for example, B&H, Best Buy, Micro Center, Amazon, and then we have also in Canada, Canada Computers, and Memory Express. Mm -hmm. uh, about the Oris cards real quick, because uh, I know we've been getting a lot of questions on when the Oris cards will be available. Those are not released yet, unfortunately, but they will be coming very soon. Uh, we don't have the exact date to give you guys, unfortunately, uh, but just keep an eye out for those. Mm -hmm. If you want more information on the Oris RTX 30 series, be sure to check out the launch page that's in the description. Uh, we've been also getting a lot of comments on the giveaway, and that's going to be also available for you guys to see on the launch page. So I highly, highly recommend you guys to go check it out. It is Oris.com slash RTX 30. And the sweepstakes will be uh, can be found uh, on the top right corner of that page. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to be giving away nine 30 series graphics cards. Oh, nine cards? Nine Dang. cards. <laughs> I wish we could sign up. Uh, we have three Ors cards and six gigabyte cards, three of the Gaming OC and three of the Eagle OC. Mm -hmm. So nine, nine lucky winners will be able to take that home through that giveaway. And, uh, other than the graphics cards, we also have some awesome Oris mm -hmm. goodies, uh, peripherals, I think memory as well. Yeah. And power supply. Power, power supply as well. Cards. Yes, yes, totally. <laughs> and uh, so for the giveaway, we're going to be doing a, I think, I believe it's a photo contest um, in the, to kind of in light of the theme of the max cover cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take a picture of uh, yourself with like wind blowing at your face yeah. and submit it. Uh, so good luck, everybody. We uh, hope you check that out. And we, Definitely keep an eye out for the Oris cards mm -hmm. as they'll be coming soon. Yep. Uh, another thing is uh, we're very excited to see what the RTX 30 series is bringing in terms of performance. Uh, in Vans segment just earlier, we saw some particular perf uh, big performance games, especially in 1440p and also 4K gaming. So we're very excited to see how this would change the landscape of the gaming scene uh, moving forward. Uh, even in games that are very graphic intensive, like Red Dead Redemption 2, mm -hmm. we're still able to see pretty sizable performance gains on that as well. So we're very excited to see how you know 4K gaming might become more normal yeah. Yeah, from more now on, now. especially given the fact that these cards are at a more a pretty affordable price point. Yeah. I would yeah. say. Um, so if you're ever thinking about upgrading from you know a 10 series or even a 20 series. Now it's a good time. Yes, yeah, the time say. is now. <laughs> so Brian, how do you think you know the thirty series will affect the the gaming landscape that we just talked about? So I think with this generation of graphic cards, we have so much power available now, so we can run fourteen forty p at higher refresh rates, and four uh, K sixty is uh, attainable now at a relatively uh, good price point. Mm -hmm. Before getting four K sixty fps would be you would need two 2080 Ti's, and now with the performance of the 3080, uh, you can run that 4K 60, and the possibilities are endless. So mm -hmm. high resolution, high refresh gaming is uh, attainable at a fair price and totally. a good price as well. Totally, yeah. yeah. And you know, here at Gigabyte, we also have a whole ecosystem of products available to suit those gaming needs. Um, not only do we have uh, power supplies that are that will be able to support the new Ampere cards. We also have uh, monitors coming out, ones okay. with uh, SS IPS, for example. Yeah, so get the you super that, speed IPS. Yeah, get you that those high refresh rates yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, low response times as well. And low so, response times too. So usually IPS panels are slow, but now we're introducing uh, super fast ones, mm -hmm. comparable to uh, TN panel speeds. 
Yeah, so, so I'm super excited to see like what is to come mm -hmm. for like ray tracing and also games moving forward. And of course, all this stuff can't be done with, with the power behind these cards. Uh, you know, of course, we had to add a, an awesome new cooling technology mm -hmm. to these graphics cards. Um, we do have a very special guest that's going to be joining us today. Uh, I can't picture a better person to break down the design and performance mm -hmm. of the Aorus graphics card, which um, was what was bench what, what was used to benchmark um, all those games that you just saw uh, just a few moments ago. So at this time, I would like to welcome everybody to the show, our product man marketing manager from Taiwan, Andy. Hey Andy, how's it going? Hey, how's Andy. it going? It's so, going great. It's going, going great. good. Going good. Uh, what time is it in Taiwan right now? Uh, let me check. One thirty a.m. <laughs> oh, a.m. <laughs> well, thank you for. You but know, I think it's fine. Yeah, thank, thank you for joining us today. I'm still making the sacrifice. Excited to see. You know, we're gonna launch the RDX thirty series mm -hmm. graphic cards. So mm -hmm. it's okay though. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to uh, talk with us. Mm. Yeah, so uh, mm. for the people in the audience, if you have questions now, we are getting more questions um, fed to us right as, as the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, Andy is the perfect pers person to ask because he works very closely with the PMs in HQ. Mm -hmm. And so he's the perfect person to kind of like pick his brain. So uh, with that being said, Andy, um, the name of this event is Max Covered Cooling launch event. So before we dive into the performance and all the juicy stuff, uh, I want you to talk about the design of the Aorus cards. And you know, can you explain to the audience what Max Covered Cooling is? Yeah, uh, just based on the wording, Max Covered Cooling is some kind we just try, try to make the fan coverage to the maximum. Mm -hmm. So under fan uh, Max Covered Cooling, there will be three key technology the stack fan, alternate spinning, and also the wind cloud. The stack fan is the thing we have used since GTX 10 series. Basically, we just try to eliminate the airflow dead zone and increase the thermal efficiency. For alternate spinning, it's kind of a great transition, transition of the gigabyte we use from GTX 10 series as well. Try to change the way of the middle, uh, the middle fan direction, spinning direction try to delay the turbulence between the fans. And wind cloud is something brand new on the RDX 30 series will be, it's the stationary fan blade under beneath the fan. And it could increase the air pressure, pressure because it could channel the airflow into the heat sink. So that will be all about a mass cover cooling. And we're getting a lot of questions, Andy, on you know what the difference is between the cooling design on for example, 10 series, 20 series versus 30 series. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate more on, for example, the, the difference between the stack fans? Because I think both the 20 series and 30 yeah. series have stack fans. Yeah, 10 series also. 10 yeah. series too. So what's the difference there? Um, how much more coverage are we, are we talking about for the 30 series? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think we can explain it from why we deliver the stack fan. Because, you know, on traditional three fan design on the graphic card, there's some space between the fans, which can be blown, mm -hmm. so the air, uh, the thermal efficiency will be weakened. So on the GDX 10 series, we have come up the stake fan. But, mm -hmm. you know, even though we try to make the fan staked, but it still can 100% cover to the whole heat sink. Mm -hmm. So on the RDX 30 series, we just uh, redesigned the fan edge, try to make the angle more greater. So it will be more staked perfectly. Mm -hmm. And the heat sink beneath the fan could be 100% blown by the airflow. And that's the reason why we come on slogan max cover cooling. Mm, I see. And yeah. with that max cover cooling, mm -hmm. would, you, would you say 30 series cars would run quieter than previous generations and stuff like that? Uh, should be, yeah. <laughs> but as as you as we stated in the video for the Aorus version, because we have quite limited time to tune the driver, fan speed, fan curve, and also the mm -hmm. GPU clock. So our R and D team still fine tuning these things, and mm -hmm. we hope you guys, I mean the audience, you will get the best performance things with the optimal noise level once it's available in the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Another question that I noticed we've been getting a lot is the difference between the Aorus Extreme and the Aorus Master. Um, so mm -hmm. those are new models that we're going to be introducing. So mm -hmm. I guess that's why the audience is um, is asking more yeah. about those. Because so, they know the Gaming OC, they know the Ego OC, yeah, right? They know the Extreme as well, mm -hmm. but the Master is something new that we added. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of tell us uh, who the Aorus Extreme is for and who the Aorus Master is for, yeah. for example? I think Aorus is the premium brand. So all the product on the Aorus brand were, was yeah. built for the enthusiast or the most hardcore gamers. And yeah, I saw somebody, a lot of people asking about Master. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we just try to sync the segment of the of the product model with yeah. our motherboard. If you take a look at our Aorus motherboard, we also got Extreme and also the Master. So let's jump mm -hmm. back to the graphic. So what's the difference between the or RTX 3080 Extreme and also the master version. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to say that the difference is quite, you know, just a little difference of that. For example, on Extreme, we will put everything to the maximum, like we will use the maximum size of the vapor chamber, which is directly mm -hmm. contact with the graphic to increase the thermal efficiency, but you won't see it on the master. So mm -hmm. this is the only little difference of, for, from the Extreme and master. But mm -hmm. both of these models share some quite unique features, like the mesh cover cooling and also the LCD edge view, which you can see a lot of useful uh, GPU info from the side LCD panel. OK. Mm -hmm. So uh, I noticed that you mentioned that there's a vapor chamber plate. Does that cool the mm -hmm. GPU only, or is it cooling everything on the card? Uh, you, you can tell from the size is that the vapor mm -hmm. chamber uh, the size of the vapor chamber on Aorus RDS 3080 is quite big, so it could cover not just the GPU diet itself, but mm -hmm. also the VRAM and also other the power circuit. Or let's put it put it in this way: the hardest part of the graphic card will cover by vapor chamber. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good to hear. So all the hot parts would be cooled with the vapor chamber. Yeah, uh, exactly. Okay. So what's the advantage of a vapor chamber over a regular copper base plate, for example? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Linus has explained about vapor chamber yeah. before. It actually, it's not something really, I mean, because there's the space inside, so there's liquid inside, which is, is quite easy, being easily boiled. Mm -hmm. So the heat conduction, heat transfer rate is much higher than the uh, typical copper plate. So, which means the heat uh, conduction and thermal efficiency will be much better compared to the copper plate. I see. And Andy, um, another question we've been getting is uh, on kind of the design of the fans yeah. for the 30 series. Some of our audience mm -hmm. um, noted that it's different this time around from mm -hmm. what we had on the 2080, for example, the mm -hmm. halo rings. Um, can you kind of explain to us, you know, um, the kind of the <laughs> decision process <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I know. These, this I new know. cooler I design that we have? I got it. <laughs> yeah, because we got a lot of similar feedback mm -hmm. from no matter the group inside the company or the group outside the company. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I got to say it's a, it's a difficult decision. But, you know, Ampere, I mean, the RDX graphic is such an energy beast. As you can see in the launch event video, the TGP of the RDX 3080 is 320 watt, and TGP of the 3090 will be 350 watt. Mm -hmm. And actually, according to our R&D test right now, uh, it could consume over 400 or even 450 watt, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's an energy-based force, and it's really hot. So we just see that if we just remove the RGB rings mm -hmm. from the fan, the thermal effic efficiency will be better. Right. So after kind of long debate about taking it, or taking it out or not, we just decided to, hey, we still need to help you guys to drive out the best performance of the RDS graphics. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we choose to use the stack, fine, stack fan in large, in large fan size. And yeah, that's, that's why it goes. Yeah, yeah and Andy, I noticed that these cards are, you know, oops, <laughs> they are a little longer than the previous generation. Also yeah. thicker too. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I was, I was gonna say, like, my first guess would have been 
that when you guys vertically mount it, it might not, you know, be able to fit on all the cases now. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, the the previous mm -hmm. one was uh, sometimes it was a tight fit on some, uh, especially some of the uh, yeah. MATX cases mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. So was that also part of maybe the reason why? I suppose. Yeah. So it looks like we focus a lot on cooling this time around. Right? Yeah. Cooling. Yeah. 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 It, it's all about so, cooling, as you can okay. see. Okay. Uh, we go we all, all on all the gigabyte and OS graphic card we feature the screen cooling mm -hmm. screen cooling technology yeah actually it's just we have enlarged the length the size of the heat sink over the type of pcb and we have additional hall the cover hole on the cover to let airflow go across the heat sink mm -hmm. so that's the reason why it become longer and a little bit thicker but on Ego and Gaming LC, I think the slot it takes is still acceptable, about 2.7 slot. Okay. So if you want to put it okay. in some kind of mid-range case, yeah. I think it still works. Okay, okay. Uh, and then how about, do you have an Aorus card over there? Like yeah. how thick are the Aorus cards compared yeah. to the Gigabyte cards? It looks like you have one right <laughs> there in front of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have one just right here. Uh, so this that's... is the Aorus RDX3080 Extreme. <laughs> Right. Uh, the slot of it is around 3.5. Can you give us a so, slot size? Can you kind of, let's hold it up real yeah, quick. Yeah, let's hold it audience. up like this. Oh, that's a big boy right yeah. there. That's <laughs> yeah. a big boy. Yeah. But Super I got to say, it's all about cooling. Because we want, mm -hmm. because you know, just like Jensen said in the, the, in the keynote, the, the performance of the RDX 30 series is really astonishing. And we just want to make sure that when you are playing your favorite 4k game or doing 3d rendering mm -hmm. nothing will be crashed nothing will be harmed so that's the reason why yeah we designed this uh, a little bit bigger boy yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bigger boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> um brian do you want to talk about wind claw real quick yeah andy uh we saw that there was the wind claw feature that you talked about briefly but can you detail us more about that oh yes of course uh whenever the fan spinning then airflow will be generated mm -hmm. and airflow will be blown to the heat sink to bring the heat away. But we mm -hmm. found that when the fan is spinning, there's some floating air around the fan, which is useless. Mm -hmm. So we just try to think about, hey, is there any other way we can guide this floating airflow mm -hmm. to the heat sink? Then more airflow will be blown to the heat sink and more heat will be blown away. So that's the reason why we designed the wind cloud. So actually it's kind of um it's kind of traditional classical yeah. uh, mm -hmm. fan design mm -hmm. in the in the in some other industry for example like the electric fan mm -hmm. that, they, that you, you use daily in your home mm -hmm. but actually nobody has think about to put in it in the graphic card before and yeah. because we just think about how we gonna uh, ut utilize the floating air around the fan also mm -hmm. increase the air pressure so our R&D team, team had come up the wind cloud. Dang, that's, that's cool. The, that's yeah, why that's wind awesome. cloud. So it helps happening. increase yeah. the airflow and the static pressure of the fans. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. So that should and help push it through it, that thick heat sink. Try to make the airflow more unified, more mm -hmm. condensed. Yeah, yeah, more like Just channel. like you can just take a look at the electric fan in your home. If you just mm -hmm. take out the front cover, mm -hmm. you will find the airflow is become a little bit mass. Yeah. Okay. And we got a question here asking about, you know, the airflow that's getting pushed out of the card. Yeah. Um, so we do have something called screen cooling mm -hmm. on all the 30 mm -hmm. series cards. Yeah. Uh, you can see yeah. it right here yeah. in the back. There's a little uh, extra uh, opening right here. Yeah, where the air... similar to the mm -hmm. Founders Edition. It's very similar to the Founders Edition yeah. where the air will actually get pushed this way. Yeah, it'll and flow then, past yeah. through the card. Yeah, so yeah. we got a question Absolutely. actually asking, uh, they said they noticed the air can go out from the rear of the card, which I not sure if you're referring to the rear as in right here. Yeah, um, probably, probably. But Andy, can you kind of talk about what's first of all what screen cooling is before mm -hmm. we get to the airflow portions and how it affect um, or how it might affect um, airflow in the system? Yeah. You mean a screen cooling? Screen cooling. Yeah, yeah. screen cooling. Okay. Uh, screen cooling basically just uh, under screen cooling basically mm -hmm. it's just enlarged heat sink over the PCB. So actually you can see right in this part, right in this part, there's no PCB on. Mm -hmm. So whenever you deploy several fans, maybe 12 or 
10 centimeter span in your case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when you put the graphic card like this, the airflow will be sucked in and go through the graphic card and brings more heat from mm -hmm. the heat sink. That's the reason why uh, screen cooling exists and this kind of the new cooling technology that has been widely used by others, including NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But since the airflow seems to, you know, it seems to go up, right? If you're if you're mounting yeah. it in the system, right? What's above the mm -hmm. graphic card would be the processor, yeah. for CPU example, cooler, usually, mm -hmm. right? Or CPU, the CPU cooler. Would the airflow that's going blown up affect that the thermals on the CPU at all? Um, I don't think. Yeah, I saw some people has concern about it, but I don't think it will be a big issue because. <laughs> Um, for now, if we think if you want to pair this monster bits, you mm -hmm. need to have something powerful as well. I mean, for the CPU, like for mm -hmm. like 9900K or 10900K or like the AMD, like 3950X or 3750, 3700X or above. Mm -hmm. So usually you will have huge cooler or even AIO or even water cooling for that. So I think it won't be a big concern. How about, um, how would you say like many ITX case lovers would, uh, yeah. <laughs> should, should build around the 30 series graphics cards mm -hmm. in that case? Um, many ITX, I, I would imagine for most cases, you know, we recommend a nice ATX case with good airflow with this series. Mm -hmm. um, I know, it's, you know some, every, a lot of the mini ITX cases are very unique mm -hmm. and, and different. So the orientation mm -hmm. might, you know, be not the best for 30 yeah. series cards, um, but I guess it's more of a case on case mm -hmm. or case by case scenario mm. there. So what's your kind of take on that one? On the, the type of PC case suitable for 30, the best suitable ones for 30 series? Uh, my personal suggestion is that currently, I mean, for uh, 3080 or 3090, if you want, you, if you want to have the best performance of these mm -hmm. two graphics, you really need to choose some huge case, not just because of its huger. I mean, the graphic card itself. Mm -hmm. Also, you will you will you always need a kind of, some kind of standard size of the power power supply, because just like Nvidia suggests that if you want to have go for the RTX 3080, you need to have the power supply that could supply at least 750 watt. And yeah. for my personal suggestion, A50 mm -hmm. will be safer. Mm -hmm. So there's no chance you can choose the S SFX standard one right so right. my suggestion is that if you want to embrace 4k gaming at 60 hertz or even higher go for some huger case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. uh on the topic of uh, power and heat and tdp and stuff uh what is the new max covered cooling card rated for in terms of uh cooling performance it uh is a that's a really good design. question uh just like what we stated in the mm -hmm. video that we are still fine tuning the clock yeah fan speed and also the fan curve so currently i don't have exact answer for that mm -hmm. but our r d team has come up several bios feasible bios made which may be applied in the mass production graphic card mm -hmm. and now i have seen some uh, amazing digit like 450. Yeah. so i guess the mass cover cooling can handle at least 450 watt and even higher so mm -hmm. I will keep Dang, you guys that's awesome. up to date. Yep. So that's an extra 100, 100 like 30 watts headroom over the, exactly. for the 3080. Okay. Exactly. And, and I, I assume it will be higher. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's good to hear. So uh, yeah, so that's really nice to see. Um, do you know about the gaming OC or the Eagle OC and the cooling capacity of those cards? Oh, yes. Uh, let me start from the gaming OC because mm -hmm. in the RDX 30 series, it's become a little bit different. First, it supports dual BIOS mode right now. So you can oh, choose dual between BIOS. like silence, silent BIOS or the game mode. So it depends on which one you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And second is that we use the brand new graphene nano lubricant. Mm -hmm. So which increase the endurance of the fan mm -hmm. to up to maybe 2.1 times. So mm -hmm. which, which makes it more durable. And also the most important of all is the fan size mm -hmm. because the diameter 
of the fan uh, size on the Gaming OCP4, I mean on RDX 20 series, is about 8 centimeters. But now on the RDX, 20, RDX 30 series Gaming OC, the diameter of the fan has been increased to 9 centimeters. Okay. So now you got two 9 centimeters fan and also, uh, also one 8 centimeters fan. So mm -hmm. the thermal efficiency will be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the topic of power still, um, we saw that NVIDIA introduced a new 12-pin power connector. Yep. Is that something we have to worry about for the Gigabyte and Aorus cards? Uh, for whole lineup of the Gigabyte and Aorus mm -hmm. red card, we don't need to worry about the 12-pin stuff because we have been redesigned using the type code A pin mm -hmm. on both the Gigabyte and Aorus graphic cards. So you can just stick to your original power supply if it's powerful enough mm -hmm. and because we know some people may have some difficulty on getting one uh, 12 pin connector mm -hmm. i mean adapter mm -hmm. so that's the reason why we stick to the type code a pin design oh that's okay. fantastic yeah. yeah we've been getting a lot of questions mm -hmm. on you know whether we're going to be using the yeah 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 exactly yeah. yeah so that's so uh hear. would the two eight pin be enough power for the graphic card for example because we know that the 12 uh, pin was introduced because they need more power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For Giga, but, uh, for Gaming OC and Ego, there mm -hmm. will be two A pin. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Ors, there are triple A pin because just like just just like I told you that yeah. the watt of the max carver cooling module could handle has exceed over 450 watt, mm -hmm. and the Type Code A pin, one Type Code A pin connector could provide up to 150 watt. Mm -hmm. So, you just do some uh, real quick calculation, then you will realize that DOA pin won't be enough. So that's no. the reason why we changed the design. I know some of some of our fans has watched our old graphic card in yeah. the uh, <laughs> first time that we revealed photos or video. Mm -hmm. And yes, there, there's a dual A pin on the on the graphic card mm -hmm. before, but we just redesigned it to try to boost out the maximum performance of the RDX 30 series. Dang. Mm -hmm. So 3 8 pin. So that means the card we can supply up to 450 watts of power for the Horus <laughs> card, huh? <laughs> 150 by 3 and additional 75 watt by oh, the so Express. So 500. Yeah, you can do some quick sweet, math yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah, so the sky's the limit on that card, huh? <laughs> hey Andy, uh, real quick, real quick on the um, on Aorus graphics cards, they are going to be thicker and bigger. Mm -hmm. Some of the audience here have concerns on the weight of the card yeah. when it's, once it's put into the system. Um, have okay. you seen anything with like GPU sag, or mm -hmm. would we include some kind of like brace bracket. or bracket yeah. with the packaging? Uh, okay. The total weight will be 1.7 kilo, so not a heavy actually, not as heavy as it looks. Mm -hmm. And second, about bending, the concern about bending, you can just take a look at, we have a very strong base plate and mm -hmm. it is bending resistance. So okay. there's no worry about when you put it into your case, there will be bending happen. Yeah. Okay. I know okay, some yeah, of yeah. guys may have concerns about yeah. it. So yeah, I, I yeah. I need to, I need to explain that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all, yeah. we all saw how thick it was, right? Yeah, like, four slots, four, yeah, 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 almost exactly. four slots. For so one that, card. Exactly. that was concerning, but it's, it's good to hear that the base plate's even stronger now. Yeah, the base time. plate is even stronger. Okay, yeah. so it's uh, a lot more rigid this time around, and yeah, gives a uh, structural stability. Mm -hmm. I would say even yeah. the gigabyte yeah. cards are solid, like yeah, very build actually, quality yeah. wise. Yeah. They, they seem very yeah. heavy and yeah, sturdy. they're a lot thicker and. It almost feels like it's steel, like metal now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm trying to yeah. like just like yeah, like, just bend, just bend it, but yeah, cannot, but you can't, can't do yeah. anything. It's structurally sound. Exactly. I think the Ego exactly. OC because... has the metal one too. Mm -hmm. Now, not just the gaming OC. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because because you know, as you see, the RDX 30 series car are getting longer, mm -hmm. so it's necessary to make the back plate stronger. And as the one we use on Aorus graphic card. Thickness is around 0 0.4 centimeters and it's four cut, cut, uh, cotton, so which is quite strong. So there's no need to worry about bending or just falling from your case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know a lot. There's been a lot of questions on performance. We'll get to that very shortly. Yeah. Uh, I want to wrap up the design aspect of mm -hmm. the of the segment. 
we still have to cover a few things. Uh, for example, I noticed the Aorus cards, um, they do have an LCD screen like right here-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell us more about the LCD screen and what it does? Yeah. Okay. So basically it could display uh, the information you may be interested about, like all the information about GPU, like temperature usage, GPU clock, memory clock, GPU usage, memory usage. Mm -hmm. So these are all the things you may notice you want you may want to notice when you play the games or doing 3D rendering. Right. Also, we this display supports uh, the customization information displayed, so you can put your favorite text, no matter what what's the language you are using right now, Chinese, mm -hmm. English, French, no matter what kind of language you're using, it mm -hmm. could support for sure. And you could also input the, your favorite picture, uh, which is in the format of the JPEG. And even you can input the GIF, the little animation to that, mm -hmm. so you can fully customize it. And you know, to your surprise, we also designed a little chippy, a little falcon that could react <laughs> with your usage. Right. Uh, at first, when you put on, it's just an egg. And as the time mm -hmm. you use your graphic card longer, then you will be born, the little falcon will be up and sleep, yeah. eating, and getting bigger, <laughs> bigger, bigger. bigger. Yeah, so like a little Tamagotchi then, huh? yeah. yeah, the classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody you can play with. Yeah. 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 yeah, like a little pet that plays with, that you can grow Yeah, with. exactly. <laughs> so, Andy, all that is absolutely great, but how do I, how do I like, change the settings? Like how, which app would I use yeah. and stuff like that? Uh, you can use the current RGB Fusion because we have all integrated setting into mm -hmm. one software. So you can just do open the RGB Fusion software and uh -huh. everything will be set. Okay, okay. That's very cool. So like under the graphic card menu now, there'll be yeah. all those new options available. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, that's cool. That yeah. is really cool. And the LCD screen is only going to be on Aorus cards, right? Not Gigabyte 30 series? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, got but it. But okay. for whole Aorus lineup, uh, we will support the LCD display. I see. Very cool. Um, and then I think we talked a lot about Aorus, but I want to quickly talk about the gigabyte cards, which are available for sale as of today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we brushed earlier very quickly on like gaming OC and ego OC, mm -hmm. but I don't really talk about like the difference of it. Um, I would say for starters, number one, I think the gaming OC does have the, uh, our standard four year warranty. Uh, mm -hmm. We're getting some questions on warranty as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you do need to, need to register online for that one. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that ego OC didn't have the same yeah. warranty coverage, mm -hmm. for example. Otherwise, like if you look at the boost clocks, mm -hmm. um, Ego, I mean, Ego OC is at about seventeen fifty five, I mm -hmm. believe, and yeah. the Ego, oh, sorry, the gaming, sorry, Ego OC is at seventeen fifty five. Yeah. <laughs> gaming OC is at about eighteen hundred. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, like, what are the differences you say between these two graphics cards, and who would buy the Ego OC? Who would buy the gaming OC? Yeah. Okay. For gaming OC, because just like you said, the GPU clock is higher, and also mm -hmm. we have some other functions like dual BIOS support. So for gaming OC, we think if you are looking for the card, RD, like RDX 3080, that could perfectly drive your favorite AAA game title with the 4K 60 Hertz setting, and also with the ultra graphic setting, you can just choose the gaming OC. And for those who just want to jump from the 1080 tie to the RDX 30 series, but still have some concern about uh, the budget, Ego will be something they can choose for. Yeah. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, uh, and I guess that covers all about the design yeah. that we have today. Uh, earlier, before we started, actually, one of the first questions we got, yeah. Andy, was that, are we going to make water force yeah. or water cooled graphics mm -hmm. cards. We've done so for the past few generations. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are we, can we can the audience expect something like that on the 30 series as well? Uh, I think the answer is yes, because you know, Aorus is the only brand, premium gaming brand in the market that so focused on the water cooling solution. So like the one you see on the RDX 20 series, we even provide two different products focus on the water cooling. One is mm -hmm. the AIO, another one is the open loop. Yeah. And we will do the same thing on the RDX 30 series. But as you know, actually the GPU supply now is not that sufficient. Mm -hmm. So 
we will postpone the water uh, water cooling product a little bit later, but for sure we will have these two pro two product. I mean AIO and also the Open Loop available in the market. And if you me if you ask me about available date, my personal guess will be the end of October or the mid of November, but I don't have exact exact answer for that still. Mm -hmm. And I think I will keep you guys posted about that. But for sure, we will have the water cooling product for the RDX 3080 for sure. I think this yeah. is important because, you know, they're really hot. They're really energy based. Mm -hmm. right. And if you choose the water cooling product from us, there are two advantage. The first is the first is that we can guarantee a hundred percent match compatible between the water block and the graphic card. Because of course we design the whole things including the water block. So mm -hmm. we can guarantee you will get the best, I mean, the 100% contact between the water block mm -hmm. to the GPU. Mm -hmm. Right. And second is that there's, you, don't need, you don't need to worry about the breaking of the warranty. Because whenever you go for some third party water uh, blocking, you need to design, disassemble the throw module first, and it may have chance to break the warranty. Mm -hmm. But if you just choose the water cooling solution from the ores, no need to worry about that. And would you say, I know you can't tell us exact like dimensions and stuff, but since it is a water block, um, I would assume it's more efficient. Yeah, it for should the be a lot thinner as well, right? So it be, would it be possibly th a bit thinner than like an Ego OC mm -hmm. or s very similar? Uh, thinner than Ego OC for sure. Yeah, yeah, for yeah sure, because right? it's water cool. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, for sure. That's for okay. sure. Uh, and we have another question here is uh, for, as we have a lot of, uh, you know, mini form factor yeah. enthusiasts in the chat today. Mm -hmm. They're asking if we had any plans to uh, produce cards that are two slot, are two thinner. slot or thinner. Yeah. So that would be probably a water cooled card. It will probably then, have right? to be a water cooled card. Probably water cooled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have additional one product, but that's for commercial or the server grade things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess if you want to have something that. Uh, thinner than two slot, water blocking, or just go for the ego, should be, yeah, acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then we also have some in PC modding enthusiasts we're here with us today. Um, we have someone asking whether it be a generic model uh, uh, to use for, with an aftermarket water, water block, block, for example. So basically a reference design. Right, right. right. You mean the? We, you mean do we have plan to come up some uh, just water blocking module to feed other AIB? Uh, um, would we have a graphic card that uses a reference uh, PCB, for example, to yeah. use with a a third party uh, water block? Um, currently we don't have plan for that. <laughs> yeah, because just like you saw, we we have we, we've already planned two yeah. water cooling products. Mm -hmm. So basically, we will just try to finish this pro two product yet. And about the compatibility to use the third party water blocking, mm -hmm. I think we need to still in discuss it internally. Okay. Yeah. How about any plans for a mini ITX 30 series, yeah. for example? <laughs> uh, for 3080, yeah. I, I assume there will be little chance for that because it's too mm -hmm. hot too hot yeah. for sure right and too powerful for sure but mm -hmm. for something below this chance i gotta say but okay. currently i cannot talk too much about that <laughs> okay no worries yeah. i have an idea yeah, what yeah. it could be but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no worries no worries and, and, yeah. and you say you mentioned that it runs hot a lot but you know in a lot of the thermal tests that we've done yeah or that we've just showed you know these cars run decently cool actually yeah we, we yeah, were yeah, surprised yeah, exactly. given the amount of power that, yeah. that that they draw they run yeah. pretty cool yeah all yeah. things considered yeah we can so, see the focus you know, the, on our cooling design yeah that's really the thing helped. surprised me right at first because mm -hmm. whenever i saw the power consumption i said whoa it must be quite hot but mm -hmm. whenever we just take a look at the temperature when uh, running those triple a game titles or mm -hmm. Um, doing the 3D rendering, actually, it mm -hmm. performs not bad. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like when when our testing play the RDR2, the mm -hmm. temperature ranges from 60 to 65 Celsius, so which is 
Yeah, perfectly great. acceptable. Yeah. If anything, that's a great cool. Solid. Yeah. That is yeah. Solid. Definitely. I guess we can talk more about performance now, um, mm -hmm. since we're kind of um, are getting less questions on the on the design of the cards now and the roadmap and mm -hmm. timeline stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but just to wrap wrap that part up, um, the thirty eighty gaming OC and UOC are released now. Yeah. Ors cards, we don't have a definite date yet, but definitely keep an eye out for those yeah. that'll be coming very soon. Um, as mm -hmm. well as oh, what about Water Force cards? Hey, Andy, uh, when do you expect those to be out? Hopefully um, this year. So, I just come up my personal guess yeah. because currently I don't have exact answer for that. Mm -hmm. For the air cooling, uh, RDX thirty eighty like Extreme or Master, my personal guess will be around the, the beginning of the October. Maybe, maybe, and okay. for water blocking, water cooling stuff. Uh, you, it will be a little later, maybe okay. one month later. Uh, mm -hmm. One month later than the air cooling product. Yeah. Okay. That's but that's just my personal guess. Okay, so we're shooting around Thanksgiving holiday season, huh? <laughs> maybe. Perfect maybe. time. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect time. Uh, and then oh, we got also get a lot of questions before we go to performance on the dimensions of the Aorus cards. Can you kind of give us an update on that? Um, are they going to be wider? We know they're thicker, but are they going to be longer than the Gigabyte cards? Yeah. Do you have uh, any uh, dimension specs wise or like the length, width, height? A lot of people are curious about that. Actually, it shares similar, quite similar length to the Gigabyte like Gaming OC or the mm -hmm. Eagle because, mm -hmm. you know, we just use the stack fade design. The mm -hmm. stack fan means that three fans will get more close to each other, so mm -hmm. the total length will be decreased. So actually, all this car shares the similar length to the Gaming OC, also the Ego, but it got huger fans, 11.5 mm -hmm. uh, centimeters, centimeters in diameter. That's the hugest fan you, you can see in the market right now. Yeah, so we would have the largest fan in the market for a graphic card then. Yes, 11.5 11, oh, 11. Awesome. centimeters in diameter. Yeah, almost a case fan size, which would be 12 centimeters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Or 120 millimeters. And just and, really and quick. And thanks to the steak design, we can just shrink it to the similar length mm -hmm. as the Gaming OC and the Eagle. Right. And just real quick, update on the card size. It is uh, Our Gaming OC is going to be 320 millimeters, which equates to mm -hmm. about but it's like 12.5 inches mm -hmm. long. So mm -hmm. the Oris cards would be very similar to yeah. approximately around yeah. that length, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. A lot of the yeah. information can also be found on our product pages. Uh, Core Clocks is updated on there as well. For the Gigabyte cards, yeah. yes. For the Gigabyte cards, mm -hmm. yes. Cards, yes. The Oris cards are still getting fine-tuned, and we're trying to squeeze out the max performance out of these mm -hmm. guys. Yes. So exactly. all the numbers are because, still preliminary. Yeah. It can only get better from here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. exciting. Because we, we have quite limited time of fine tuning the driver. So mm -hmm. please give us some time and we will deliver something best to all of you guys. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's talk about performance now. Um, in the benchmarks earlier that we saw, yeah. you know, of course, you know, at the 30 series is going to do well in 1080p. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Yeah. Uh, but What's your take on the you know the difference that we see in fourteen forty p and also in four k gaming? Uh, I think what you can expect on the thirty series will be for four k you can have at least sixty hertz with the mm -hmm. ultra setting. I think that's kind of playable standard for most of the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for quad HD, now you could expect uh, something higher, like over one twenty or one forty four. So when if you are a first personal shooting game lover, then you can choose the Quad HD as your uh, daily resolution. Mm -hmm. But if you would like to see more beautiful scene from the game, like the Tomb of the, the Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, mm -hmm. or the maybe the Witcher Three, you can go for the 4K. Yeah. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, I'm really excited to see also. You know. Um, how 30 series will handle ray traced games as well. Yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. before, right, I mean, ray tracing was kind of a new thing with the 20 mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing more mm -hmm. and more titles that, that uh, support our design around ray tracing. So, you know, where do you see the performance gains in ray traced games and stuff like that? I think that's the most amazing part because, you know, uh, 
uh, their second generation of the RT core inside. And mm -hmm. most important of all, the overall performance has been increased. So now you can have the game being ray traced under 4K, but with the frame rate over 60. Mm -hmm. For example, we have taste the game control under the ray tracing with the DLSS on. Actually, we could reach the frame per second around 60 to 65. So which is playable, really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So I think nowadays people could, you know, more enthusiastically to find yeah. those ray trace game and have these games being run, being driven by the RDX 3080 or 3090. Mm -hmm. And they will know how beautiful, how capable it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about, can you kind of speak on the generational difference then between like a 2080 Ti, for example, mm -hmm. versus a 3080 mm -hmm. yeah. um, in those type of games? Like what kind of performance boost are we really talking about here at the end of the day? I think we're, we're talking about, for example, like control, whenever you want to play it with ray traced on RDX 2080 Ti, mm -hmm. the, FP, the average FPS should be around 40 to uh, 40 to 45 I think mm -hmm. which still a little bit which still there's some gap between the the playable standard right but whenever right. you go for RDX 3080 I think 4k 60 is just a basic mm -hmm. so I think yeah. it's so 4k 60 is just easy now yeah in, on RDX 30 series so it's kind of like the new standard yeah. of things and yeah. anyway, there are a lot yeah. of 4k okay, 60 yeah. monitors out there too yeah yeah at mm -hmm. affordable price so mm -hmm. yeah so does yeah. that mean Flight Simulator we can run at 4K60? <laughs> that's a big title that... Uh... Yeah, that's really a big title. Yeah. For Flight Simulator, what we observe from right now, there's just still a little gap uh, to the 4K60, but mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. overall performance is much better than RDX 2080 time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And would you say like, uh, would CPU, your CPU choice, for example, bottleneck, the graphic card performance or for example if you're using like an older generation motherboard or older cpu but you yeah. get a new, completely new card and you just stick it into your system or swap it into your system would that be a bottleneck at all for yeah so a lot of side? questions is um yeah would pci 4.0 be worth it or pci 3.0 mm -hmm. is you'll get similar performance still yeah yeah okay internally we have done these these tests Mm -hmm. on both Intel and AMD platform. Mm -hmm. For AMD, if you choose, if you have the processor uh, power more powerful than the 3600X, I think it should be fine. Mm -hmm. We observe some uh, FPS decrease when, you, when, uh, when using the CPU like the 3600X, but that's just the baseline. So mm -hmm. if you have the 3700X, 3800X, or 3900X, or, or even the 3950X, mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Okay. okay. And for Intel, internally we only use CPU for testing for now, and for sure we will add more CPU into the test list. Mm -hmm. We use the 9900K and also 10900K for okay. testing. So right. far, we didn't see any bottleneck even on the 9900K. Yeah. Okay. okay. And That's about perfect. the motherboard choose, uh, currently we only do the test on the X570, B550, Z490, and Z390. Just, just the three. Just the three. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So there wasn't so too much can, of a gap then. We can enlarge the, the taste, test mm -hmm. list in the future. Okay. Yeah. So were you guys able to test PCI 4.0 and 3.0 in these as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just like, uh, because we have done the test, the performance test, both on AMD platform, X570, mm -hmm. yeah. and also yeah. on the Z490. Actually, we don't see the performance difference between the PCI PCI 3.0 or PCI mm -hmm. 4.0. Okay. But we think the things will be changed if the RTX IO, I mean, the things that the NVIDIA, NVIDIA has proposed yeah. to a, a technique that to bypass the CPU to have the GPU directly contact with the PCI storage. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Microsoft is now coming up the direct storage API. Yeah, but we when the time that the direct storage API came up, it will be really interesting. Okay, yeah, so, so that's we'll when see. the PCI yeah, 4.0 yeah, yeah, yeah. will come to yeah, play. Yeah, but for currently, we don't see much different, we don't see much huge difference, performance difference between the PCIe 3.0 and the PCIe 4.0. Okay, well that's good to hear. 
because uh, most people still mm -hmm. have PCI 3.0. A lot of people are 4.0. So, but yeah. uh, it doesn't yeah. matter too much which one you choose. Yeah, but just like what I said, okay. when the Microsoft has finished the, oh, the for now, that, then, that yeah. build up, <laughs> it will be interesting. I don't have okay. I don't have assumption for that. Yeah, at least for now. Yeah, it's a pretty we'll exciting see. technology that a graphic card can uh, take advantage of uh, NVMe storage. Yeah. So that's yeah, pretty basically cool. Basically, just try to reduce the help communication between the CPU and the storage and try mm -hmm. to have the GPU contact come, do the communication with the PCIe storage directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the PCIe storage speed will be matters if that's yeah. so. Okay, that, that's exciting to see. Gotcha. Uh, okay, well, I think that's about sums it up. I, I, I say the, you know, the this generation, the performance gains are substantial yeah. overall uh, mm -hmm. for the 30 series. Um, in terms of compatibility, it seems like, you know, for the most part, you're not going to get any, um, you know, drops or bottlenecks yeah. regardless of the hardware you have. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we still recommend users, of course, if you're using something that's, you know, five, six years old, you know, yeah. might be time to upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah that's not great. Especially, yeah. uh, but the thing to look out for the most uh, would definitely be, you know, making sure your power supply would be able to support the Ampere cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have some, I do have a gigabyte power supply right yeah. here. We do have um, 850, 750, and yeah. all the way down to of the stack as well mm -hmm. available uh, today. Um, so be sure to check those out too as well. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Andy, so much for talking about max cover cooling. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is something that's, you know, we saw the temperature tests yeah. and, you know, it's mm -hmm. really impressive what we, the temperatures we're yeah. able to For that many watts, for we that were many able watts to achieve going like through. 60, mm -hmm. around the 60 range of uh, temperatures. That's it, uh, really well, good it, to it, hear. It's even not a finalized one. So... Oh, and it can only get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only getting better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting it's better. even not finalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's really good to hear. That's really awesome to hear. Yeah, Max Cooling has the alternate spinning, the wind claw, and also the max coverage yeah. basically. Yeah, so pretty so pretty much, uh, yeah, no dead that. zones and just full cooling. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I want to do another quick shout out for our giveaway that we're going to mm -hmm. be doing. Um, so we are going to be choosing nine lucky winners to take home a 30 series graphic card mm -hmm. as part of um, our launch event. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, we're giving it three Aorus cards and three of the Eagle and three of the Gaming OC. I believe it is going to be a photo sweepstakes of sorts. You have to take a picture of yourself and submit it mm -hmm. uh, for a chance to win these goodies. So mm -hmm. be sure, once again, check out the giveaway at Aorus.com slash RTX30 and click the sweepstakes button on the top. Um, and then with that being said, uh, I, I'm not sure on the the uh, the exact end date of the giveaway, mm -hmm. but be sure to do that uh, as soon as you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're also going to be giving away some Aorus peripherals, some of the other stuff yeah, too. Some power supplies power to supplies, power those new graphics. Right, cards. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the landing page too, guys, you'll be able to find a lot of information on what we just talked about, the maximum mm -hmm. cooling. You'll also be able to see um, some more images of the um, the Aorus cards as well, the Extreme and the Master. Yeah. And yeah, be sure to. Uh, be on the lookout for those because those will be coming to the markets very soon. Yeah, we'll announce it on socials as well so you can uh, make sure to stay up to date on that and uh, mm -hmm. check out all our channels. And uh, so another big question we had was availability. Should we? Availability. So can we talk yeah, more availability. Uh, I would expect you know the uh, I, it's probably sold out already. Is yeah. what I'm guessing. Uh, if you're yeah. checking all the so retailers. Right. Uh, we do expect the uh, availability to, be, to improve uh, week by week mm -hmm. and over the course of the next month, yeah. we should see yeah. a big influx. As production ramps up, of uh, these, we of should, the it should ease cards. the shortages that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the coming weeks, uh, it will be coming in every day pretty much and every week and it should uh, get smoother over time. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully by the end of the year, everyone will have a card. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hope. That is the hope. Uh, well, and that about wraps it up for us. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in to yeah. the Aorus RTX 30 Max Hover Cooling Launch event. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very glad to have you guys today. Yep. Thanks again, Andy, for sharing all your, uh, your all, insight. all the insights and knowledge <laughs> yeah. on the performance and design of these cards. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. And mm -hmm. wherever you are, we hope you're keeping safe. And we will see you guys next time. Yep. Take care. Take care. See you. All right.
Bye.